Okay, in the second half of this uh, module on polynomials, we're going to talk about factoring. So before we get too deep into factoring, let's just remind you how to factor out the greatest common factor of a number. So let's take a look at these three terms here. What you want to find the greatest common factor here, we're not going to factor yet. We're just going to identify the greatest common factor. So if, if you think about all the factors of 24 and all the factors of 16, all the factors of 32, the largest factor that will divide into all three of those is 8. So 8 would be the greatest common factor. Now if there's variables involved, you have to consider the coefficients and the variables. So here the coefficients are 6, 9, and 12. And so the largest factor that will go into all, divide into all three of 6, 9, and 12 would be 3. But now we have to also decide what is the largest factor that can be divided into x squared, x to the fifth, and x cubed. Well, it's actually x squared, because if you chose x cubed or x to the fifth, you actually can't divide x cubed into x squared uh, very well but x squared can be divided into x to the fifth and x cubed. So putting those two together, the greatest common factor would be 3x squared. And then here, the largest number that would divide into 14, 35, and 49 evenly would be 7. And then the largest power of a that will go into a squared, a squared, and a would be a. And the largest power of b that goes into b, b squared, and b squared would be b. So put those three factors together, and you get 7ab for the greatest common factor. Now, if a, if a number doesn't really have a greatest common factor, that's sort of a misnomer. If, if you can't find a number that will divide into all three of the terms, then the greatest common factor would simply be 1. So, so actually, any, any set of terms has to have at least the greatest common factor of 1. So that's how you uh, find the greatest common factor. Now, what you want to do here is when you, when you want to factor out the greatest common factor from a polynomial, you have to decide, first of all, what is the greatest common factor of, of these terms, a cubed and a squared? Well, the greatest common factor of these terms would be a squared, because a squared can be divided into a cubed. So when you factor the a squared out of the polynomial, you have to think, okay, what factors would I be left with? So one way to do that is just divide each of these terms by what you factor out. So if you divide a cubed by a squared, you'll get a. And if you divide minus a squared by a squared, you'll get minus 1. So therefore, this if you factor the a squared out, one factor is a squared, but the other factor is a minus 1. Now you can check this real easy, and, and I find it uh, helpful to do so, uh, just to do a mental check and say, okay, let's see, if I multiply this back using the distributive property, a squared times a should equal a cubed, and it does and a squared times minus 1 should equal minus a squared, and it does. Okay, so that's just a mental check we can do. Now if you look at uh, these two terms, the, the greatest common factor of 3 and 9 would be 3, and the greatest common factor of x squared and x to the fourth would be x squared, and the greatest common factor of y cubed and y cubed, of course, would simply be y cubed, and since there's no z in the first term, then z you know, we don't have a power of z that we can use. So now if we say, okay, what happens if I divide 3x squared y cubed by 3x squared y cubed? Well, I think that's obvious. I get 1. And then what happens if I divide 9x to the fourth y cubed z by 3x squared y cubed? Well, 9 divided by 3 is 3. x to the fourth divided by x squared is x squared. And then y cubed divided by y cubed is 1, so the y cubed disappears and then you still have the z. So you get 1 plus 3x squared z for the other factor. And again, you can multiply back by distributive property and just check to do a mental check to see if you get uh, what you started with. Okay, so here we have uh, 6, 
a squared b squared minus 12 a cubed b cubed plus 36 a b to the fourth. So the greatest common factor of 6, 12, and 36 would be 6. And then a squared, a cubed, and a, the greatest common factor is a. And then b squared, b cubed, b the fourth, the greatest common factor is b squared. So if I factor 6ab squared out of each of these terms, again, you can divide each of these terms by 6ab squared. If you take 6x squared b squared divided by 6ab squared, the 6 is cancel, the b squareds cancel, and a squared divided by a just gives me a. And then if you divide 6ab squared into this, negative 12 divided by 6 is negative 2, a cubed divided by a is a squared, and b cubed divided by b squared is just b. So I get minus 2a squared b. And then finally, divide 36 by 6. You get 6. Divide a by a, and the a's cancel, so you just get 1. And then b to the 4th divided by b squared is b squared. Uh, it looks like I left off the parentheses there. Okay, and then this last one, since it has no common factor, it won't factor because the greatest common factor is 1. Now, a couple of other things I want to mention. Sometimes it's helpful to factor negative 1 from a polynomial. Uh, a lot of times you do that if you don't want the first term of your polynomial to be negative. So here I've got a negative 3x plus 4y minus 6z. If I factor the negative 1 out, all that will do is that will just change the signs of these three terms because, remember, all you do to figure out what goes inside this parentheses is divide each of these by negative 1. So negative 3 divided by negative 1 is positive 3. 4 divided by negative 1 is negative 4. And negative 6 divided by negative 1 is positive 6z. Now, ne multiplying negative 1 times a polynomial is the same as just having a negative in front of the polynomial like this. So really, there's not a whole lot to show you here. Oh, you can read this one, just factor a negative 1 out, and it'll change each of these signs changes this to a five, positive 5x squared, this to a minus 16y squared, and this to a plus 2. And of course you can write it with just the minus there if you want to. Now also you can factor out the negative greatest common factor as well. So here the greatest common factor would be 4x, but we might want to factor out a negative 4x so that we can change this first term to positive. So if we divide negative 4x into negative 16, we get a positive 4. And then of course x cubed divided by x is x squared. So we'd have 4x squared. And then if we divide 20 by negative 4, we get negative 5. And then x squared divided by x is x, so that'd give me negative 5x. And then finally if we divide negative 8x by negative 4x, we get a positive 2. So that's what would happen if we factored a negative 4x out of here. And then over here, I'm going to factor a negative 5y out of these two terms. So uh, I already see an error I made there, and I'll fix that. So if I factor a negative 5y out of this term, I'll get a five, positive 5y squared. Now also, since this is negative, and I'm going to factor a negative out of it, that sign should change too. So that should actually be a positive there. So just make that a plus. So it's negative 5y times 5y squared plus 3. And there you have it. Factoring out the greatest common factor, the minus, factoring out negative 1, and factoring out the negative greatest common factor. And the next thing I want to talk about is factoring by grouping. Now to factor by grouping, I want to show you, uh, I'm going to show you some expressions that have already been grouped. Like, let's just take a look at this first example here. Okay, so here I have 3a times x minus y, and I have 2b times x minus y. Now, I highlighted the x minus y in red, so you could see that in this term, this 3a times x minus y is the first term, the 2b times x minus y is the second term. So in this term, I can factor the x minus y out of each of these. But if I factor the x minus y out of the first term, I'm just left with 3a. And if I factor the x minus y out of the second term, I'm left with 2b. So that would be x minus y times 3a plus 2b by factoring the x minus y out. 
Now here, you'll notice in this first term I have a 2x plus 5, and in the second term I have a 2x plus 5. But if I factor the 2x plus 5 out of the first term, that's going to leave me with a 4x. And then if I factor the 2x plus 5 out of the second term, that's going to leave me with a minus 3. So I get 2x plus 5 times 4x minus 3. And of course, you can reverse the order since multiplication is commutative. Now, but really what we want to show here, it usually you're going to do this when you have four terms when you have four terms. And then what you do is you'll take these four terms and group them. So I'll, I'll group these two terms together and then I'll group these two terms together over here. And then what I'll do is I'll factor out the common factor of these two terms which is 3a. And so if I factor 3a out of those terms I get x minus y. And then if I factor, and if I factor 2b out of, out of these two terms it'll leave me with an x minus y, and notice I have a common factor of x minus y, and so when I factor the x minus y out, that's going to leave me with 3a plus 2b in the other parentheses. So you factor the x minus y out, and that leaves me with 3a plus 2b as the other factor. So the same thing here, factor out of the 8x squared plus 20x, I can factor a 4x out, and then out of the minus 6x minus 15, I can factor a negative 3 out. And then notice I have a 2x plus 5 that's common to these two terms. So then factor the 2x plus 5 out, and that gives me this. And then look at what you're left with. You're left with 4x here and minus 3 here, so the other factor would be 4x minus 3. Now, here's a a couple more examples here. I may not have time to do all of them, but let me do a couple of them here. So the first one, uh, you can factor a 3x out of these two terms and a minus 5 out of these two terms. And when you do that, you'll notice that in the first term, you have a factor of y plus z. In the second term, you have a factor of y plus z. And if you factor the y plus z out, then you get y plus z. And then the other term will be, leave you with the 3x minus 5. Here we can factor a y squared out of the first two terms, and then we can factor a negative 5 out of the second two terms, and when we do that, that should be a minus 3. Okay, so we get a, a common factor of y minus 3, and then when you factor the y minus 3 out, which I factored a y plus 3 out, so I really messed that up. But when you factor the y minus 3 out, you actually get a y minus 3 times y squared minus 5. Okay, and here's a couple more here that you can look at. Um, here I factored a 9 out of these two terms and that gave me a p minus q for the other factor. And here I factored an m out of these two terms and that gave me a p minus q for the other factor. And the p minus q is the common factor, so if I factor that out, that's going to leave me with a 9 plus m. And then the last one here if I factor, you'll notice here, it's already factored, but it's p times m minus n. And notice that this one is minus q times n minus m. Well, if you factor a negative 1 out of this, it actually will change the sign of both terms. So let me factor a negative 1 out of that. And the reason I did that was because by factoring a negative 1 out of this, it makes that m minus n. And that way, I have a common factor there, because I have m minus n here and m minus n here. But when I factor the negative 1 out, that makes that a plus q. So, so change that sign, and then factor the m minus n out of both terms, and you have m minus n for the first factor and p plus q for the second factor. Um, and then one last one here, if you have time to look at it, pause the video and look at it at that last one down there, and you'll see that Sometimes students don't think they can factor something out, but remember you can always factor a 1 out. So here I factored a 1 out of the second term, and that way you can see that I have x minus 3 as a common factor to these two terms, and then you can factor the x minus 3 out, and then you can get uh, x minus 3 times the quantity x squared plus 1. Now this method is going to come back to us in a bit when we start factoring trinomials, and so we'll see this method again later.